Hi, this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and I'm shooting this video to talk about how to run a very basic first program in the program R using the package Twitter um, to obtain some tweets. It's really not that difficult. Uh, you just need to write a little bit of a, a, a code in a few commands, uh, and you also need to install a package. Now, I'm going to assume you've done a few things already, and if you haven't done these things, you need to let me know. The first thing is that you should have installed R and RStudio, and the second thing is that you should have already obtained from uh, dev.twitter.com or apps.twitter.com, either website will work, a set of uh, access codes to get you into Twitter. You need a Twitter account for that, and you also, uh, it turns out, need to put in uh, a, a mobile phone uh, code, uh, just your mobile phone number, in order to verify that you're a legitimate user. Once you do that, um, you should then type your consumer keys and consumer secrets inside the space in the quotes. So, if my consumer key were Apple, I would type Apple under consumer key. If my consumer secret were day, I would write day. If my access token was uh, doctor, I'd put it there, and so on and so forth. Of course, your key, your secret, your token, and your token secret are going to be much more complicated because that's much more secure. Um, but that's the first thing you should do. You should do that type them in in these spaces, and then reproduce the text. And then the second thing you should do is, looking at this command up here, you should put that above it. It's called library parenthesis Twitter. Um, so when you've got that command, what is it doing? It's calling forth uh, a book from the library. You can think of it, right? It's saying, hey, go to the library and pick out that book called Twitter and show me everything that it can do. In order to have that work, you have to make sure that your library has this package called Twitter in it, and the R is, you know, in uppercase because it's the program R. It's cute and kind of silly that way. But we have to make sure the book is there. And to do that, um, we need to go to R Studio. You could actually do this in R, but R Studio is nice because it has um, every single. Uh, 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 computer instance of it, whether it's on a Windows or Linux or Mac, all looks the same. Uh, and it has a few other nice features too. So we're going to use uh, RStudio in this example. And I'm going to go up to Tools. And under Tools in the menu, I will look for the command Install Packages. Tools, Install Packages. And then I'm going to, it's going to say, where should I install it from? Oh, a repository. That's fine. And what package should be installed? And I'll try type in T-W-I-T-T-E. Oh, look, and there it is in the drop-down menu, Twitter. And we'll want to install it to a library, and we'll want to install dependencies. Now, when I do it, I've already installed it. OK. Um, so it's not going to take me that long uh, because I've already downloaded it really, right? But you should see down in your console a description of what it's doing, and you should see at the end, package Twitter successfully unpacked and MD5 sums checked. Great. Um, this will work, of course, if you can actually download, so you'll need an internet connection. Once you have that in, once you have installed your package, you're ready to go. So we've got our package ready. You, we've entered our consumer keys and consumer secrets, and everything over here, by the way, uh, to the right of these hashtags, is just a comment, and it's saying that's where it's from. And then here's another comment that says, oh, we're going to create a Twitter connection. Okay, now you're just going to need to go with this. It's, it's just a command. It's like a magic wand. It's abracadabra. It's a magic set of letters uh, with underscores. It is a command, and you just have to pretend you're waving a magic wand here. And, and it, what it's doing is it's setting up an authorized Twitter connection. That's what set up underscore Twitter underscore OAuth means. And then there's parentheses in which you're putting in <clears throat> these variables, consumer key, consumer secret, 
access token and access token secret. These things that you're saying <coughs> are equal to the stuff that's in these quotes up here, in these lines, you know, this stuff that I'm not showing you because I, I believe in security. We're then taking those and we're just literally typing in consumer underscore key because we've told the computer up here that that's what the words consumer key mean. It means all that long text that is your uh, uh, way in to Twitter. Then we're going to do something. We're going to decide we're going to look at an account. And in this example, we are going to look at uh, what account? Well, let's name the account. Okay, this arrow here means that we're giving something over here a name that we'll use for it. We'll call this text, and the text is put in quotes to let the computer know it's text. This text called Real Donald Trump, oh, we'll call that the account. And then the next thing we'll do down here is we'll just type in account again, and that's a command that says, hey, print it out, make sure it works. So it should then print out what the account is. <coughs> and then, it's going to say, hey, let's go into the account timeline. What account? In the user timeline uh, of the particular account that we're looking at. What's the account? It's real Donald Trump. And let's set n equals to 1000. What does n mean? It's a number, okay? And there's this option after the commas that says include RTSs equals true. That means we want to include some retweets. Okay, and then there's some more waving of magic wands. Okay, what is that? What does that do? Um, we're going to create something called trial DF, and it's going to be set to <coughs> um, a, a list to database format for the account timeline. And then we're going to create something called file timeline, which is really shoving together a couple pieces of text. What pieces of text are they? Well, whatever account is. And then after that, Trump CSV. And we want them to be separated by nothing. Those two quotes are right next to each other. This is a bit gobbledygook, but I'm just telling you what these these do, and then let's take the results of this trial database format that has a name, which is pasting whatever the, this account is, which means real Donald Trump in this case, and the uh, word trump.csv together. That's going to be its name. And create that thing. Create a CSV. What is a CSV? A CSV is a comma delimited file. Um, it's the sort of thing that you can open with Microsoft Excel, as a matter of fact. So once you do that, you have that all set. You've installed the Twitter package. You've entered your keys and secrets and tokens and token secrets in the right places. You can head right over to R and you're ready to run it. What could be simpler? Well, I'm actually going to put my secrets in and then I'm going to run it and then I'm going to show you what the results look like. Okay, so we have a, res a, a, a set of results in the console. I'm not going to show you all the console lines because it would contain my secrets and tokens and keys, which you can't look at. But it does show that when I put in the line account, Real Donald Trump, and then I ask it to print. It actually goes right here, and it prints out Real Donald Trump. And then it goes through the rest of the commands, and it just prints out what the commands are, which is good, because that means that, um, hey, uh, everything's gone through without an error. If you were to see an error, you would see something in red, which would indicate that you have a problem and probably have to go back and check your syntax. So... What has happened, actually? Well, I've written a CSV file to my computer. It should have about a 1,000 tweets in it, which is super. And uh, they should be from the account of our president, President Donald Trump. And it should be in a file that has the name 
real Donald Trump and capital Trump csv shoved together so i should be looking on my computer for that file and how do i know where that is well you have a working directory and to find that working directory i think it's under profile no it's under session it's under session go to the command session at the top and look at set working directory and then if you choose that directory it will show you what directory you're working with. And here it's showing the, me that I'm under PC documents. So if I go to PC documents, I should be able to find it. How do I do that? Uh, in Windows, if I hit Windows, hold the Windows key and E, it'll open this up. And then I can look in my documents folder and I'll be looking for something that says real Donald Trump Trump. And if I click it, it will show me results. How many? Let's go through. They're numbered one through, oh, I'm going to go to the end, 999. So it's giving me 999 of them, pretty close to 1,000. It's giving me the text of a tweet. Wow. That's pretty cool. It's giving me whether it's been favorited, uh, but probably by my account. How many favorites has it had by all accounts? Hey, that's pretty good. Okay, when was it created? It gives you the date, it gives you the time, all the way back to October 15th, 2016. So you can really go back in time for any one Twitter user here, whether it's been truncated or not, which is what happens when you post, say, from Facebook, it'll cut it off. It'll give you the Twitter ID so you can look it up automatically. Um, it'll give you the screen name of the person who's posting, that's real Donald Trump. How many times was it retweeted? Super. Um, so it's giving you all these variables that describe what's going on. It's giving you all the text of the tweet itself, um, which is a lot of material to work with. It's a good place to start. And if you'll notice how quickly it went, it only took a few seconds, which means that once you write this tiny little program here, which is only a few lines to get straight, you can really uh, have a powerful tool at your command. You wave that magic wand. E even though there's there's some things in here that just look a little funny, you just have to type them right. And boom, you can get lots and lots of data, lots and lots of pieces of information. And now, um, if we wanted to, we could track our president and we could find out all sorts of pieces of information about him on the basis of what he's been tweeting. What has he been up to anyway? Uh, and that's something that's pretty powerful for a little person like you or me to be able to do.